Welcome back to No Beer Left Behind video. I'm Brian, and I'm here with a style video series. Uh, this series is to kind of energize people into rediscovering classic beer styles. So in this first video, we're gonna cover a beer. Dog decided to join. <laughs> in this first video, we're gonna cover a classic brand uh, that I really enjoy. I liked it before I knew what I was drinking, so I wanna share it with you. The beer is called Delirium Tremens. It is a Belgian Golden Strong, which those of you who are wanting to learn more about Belgian Golden Strongs, be sure to check out the BJCP Style Guide over at bjcp.org. Uh, Belgian Golden Strong is, you, you, when you hear it, you think of extremely dry, highly carbonated, uh, a lot of alcohol maybe, also yes. Belgian Golden Strongs um, are the secular versions of what you would also refer to as a triple. Uh, biggest difference is Belgian Golden Strongs are not produced in uh, monastic breweries or Trappist breweries. They are secular beers. Oh, scary. Um, that's why a lot of Belgian Golden Strongs will hold names like Duvel um, or other devil references. The beer that we're going to cover, Delirium Tremens, is a Belgian Golden Strong from Brasserie Vig out of Belgium. The beer was actually first brewed in the late 80s, so it's been around a while. This beer is very unique. Um, when you pour it, you expect the Belgian Golden Strong characteristics, highly carbonated, uh, really dry, a bit of alcohol, and knowing that it falls into the Belgian pale category, you know, the Belgian pale ale, Belgian Saison, and Belgian Golden Strong have kind of a hierarchy based on alcohol and impact flavors. Not too dissimilar from the American categories of American Pale Ale, American IPA, and American Double IPA. The other connection, beyond just the intensity of flavors, uh, is that American Double IPAs tend to add sucrose to get a higher alcohol, and Belgian Golden Strongs tend to add Belgian candied sugar to help up the original gravity. Um, this beer, Delirium Tremens that we're drinking, fits every one of those flavor categories on the BJCP Style Guide. Delirium Tremens has got this nice, highly carbonated pour with a bright white head that stands for a long time. Um, you smell it, you get this like peppery, spicy smell. Uh, peppery, spicy smell. It's great. Uh, the first taste is like apple, uh, green apples and pears, which is very unique in the beer world. You wouldn't think you were going to get that from something that looks like it pours like a highly carbonated Miller Lite. The other thing that you get from this beer is, um, I can't, it's, uh, oh yeah, alcohol, a lot of alcohol. Uh, it's got kind of a long lasting alcohol burn, but not an inappropriate amount. Uh, it's just something to get your attention. You comfy? He's comfy. Uh, there is a lasting flavor that goes along with this. Um, I. I characterized it as like a, a, a white wine finish, like a European white wine, so like a Gewürztraminer or a dry Riesling wine finish. Can't put my finger on it, but I know I've had it before and I bet when you try it, you can put your finger on it. Let me know in the comments below. I kept picking up bitterness and knowing that bitterness was not a characteristic of Belgian beers, I went to the BJCP style guide to do some research. And what did I find out? Well, let me tell you. Yeast-driven phenolics uh, will enhance any bitterness that is found that, are, that can be found in a beer. So, uh, knowing that this beer is highly phenolic and that it does have a few more IBU than the typical Belgian beer, that's what gives it a pretty unique bitterness characteristic, which I don't hate. It's really good. Uh, you combine that with the dryness of the beer, it makes you want to take another sip, that's for sure. And at eight and a half percent alcohol, you got to be careful because those sips will turn into gulps. And next thing you know, you're having delirium tremens, which is not what you want. Hopefully, you enjoyed this video and, and uh, the other videos that we'll do in this series. Um, look for those every week or so. I'll try to do them. If you like this video, uh, I think you might like our podcast. Go check it out at No Beer Left Behind on your favorite podcast app. Every week, we should have a new episode out for you. And until next time, for Brian in North Texas, I'm out.